Okay, in this particular uh, demo, we're going to have a look at uh, getting our development environment set up on the module. In order to do that, there's going to be a total of um, three different uh, pieces of software that we need to install. Uh, Eclipse is going to be our IDE, but we're going to download the version of Eclipse that comes complete with the Android developer tools, the ADT. And when we download that, we'll, we'll have to install a few other little bits and pieces to give us the particular uh, version of, of Android that we'll be developing for. Those two things installed, the final thing that we'll need to add in is Subclips, which is the particular uh, SVN client that we will be using uh, to share uh, our code in the module. So first things first, let's uh, get to Clips. So if you open up your um, favorite browser, whatever it is, um, search for Android SDK. Get a link through to uh, the developer Android site. And if you navigate through to that, you'll be able to get the Android SDK. And the particular bundle that we're downloading is the one that uh, comes along with Eclipse. So we can click on that. As with all things, there's terms and uh, conditions that you'll be, of course, reading in excruciating detail and agreeing to. And then download the particular uh, version that's right for you. Reasonably large um, download. I'm just going to save it in my desktop and Android. I'll put it there. Um, we'll let that um, download as it really is done. Just a, a little aside, if we were to go back to the previous page, you might notice the Android Studio. In the fullness of time, the Android Studio is going to be the, uh, the, the preferred, or what they will say is the preferred uh, IDE for creating your Android apps within moving away from Eclipse. But at the minute it's only in beta, so uh, at least for this delivery of the module, we're going to stick with um, Eclipse. So back to your, your download directory. Um, we've got the file here. We want to uh, to unzip it. I'll just extract it out. The nice thing about uh, Eclipse is that it it runs out of the, the folder uh, that it has been unzipped to. It doesn't need to be installed. It doesn't put anything in the, the registry. So it's, it's clean in that particular regard. Effectively, it's a Java application, standalone, run alone. It does mean that um, you can put it. If you have a reasonably fast uh, USB memory stick with a good interface to it, you can run it quite effectively from a memory stick. And that's that's handy because you can then bring along your uh, your IDE and your workspace and plug it into whatever machine you're doing your development from. Only little aside in that, it, it's it's convenient, no more than convenient if you're doing that simply to to make sure you always map your USB stick onto the same drive. That'll help Eclipse whenever it starts up find the uh, the GRE the the Android files in your workspace. You don't need to be asked whereabouts is it. So we've downloaded it. We get a couple of things in our, our unzipped package. Uh, we have our SDK manager. Um, we have the SDK itself and we have Eclipse with the Eclipse executable within it. So first thing we want to do is to run the SDK manager. Now you can run it from within Eclipse, but we're going to run it um, from without. Okay, and it fires up. Now when you first download the Android, uh, the ADT, you don't get um, the version of Android that you want to develop. You just basically get the raw tools that enable you to develop Android applications. So what we want to do now is to pick the particular versions of Android that we want to develop for. So the tools are fine. We don't need to touch the tools. We have the most recent set of them. Uh, if you scroll on down, you'll see the Android L. Now Android L or API level 20 is the, the latest and greatest version of Android. It's only in preview at the time of recording this. Uh, but it's the one that replaces the, the Davlik uh, runtime. And it should make the apps an awful lot faster, an awful lot uh, responsive. So it's worthwhile downloading the bits of this to enable you to, to run your programs against it. Uh, you can choose what you want to download. Documentation is handy to get. Um, it's, a lot of these things can be large. So I mean, the, the, the more you, you pick, the, the bigger the download. And you're probably going to be downloading a few and installing a few gigs worth of additional material. So we'll take the uh, Android L, the preview. Samples, you can download those if you want to. We don't want the Android TV malarkey. We've got two system images, which are effectively the, if we want to run the emulator and to test our program uh, against uh, the emulator, we can use one of these images. I'm gonna recommend we only bother getting the Intel 
uh, system image and you'll see why in a little bit. Android 4.4 Wear, which is also API 20. We're not interested in wearable uh, apps at this point. And the one that we do definitely want to get is Android 4.4.2 or API 19. That's KitKat. Um, so we want to download our KitKat. So we want the SDK. Samples you can get if you want. We want the Intel system image. The Google APIs, um, they add a, a few extra APIs beyond the basic Android ones, but nothing we'll be using for game development. Google Glass we're not using. And if you want to have a look at the source, you can download the source. Now, the rest of the, the different versions there, um, these are these are are useful, and if you were wanting to publish uh, your app uh, to the App Store, when you're creating your app, you have to provide the minimum version that it runs on, and it's extremely advisable to test it against all of the versions higher than that. Uh, so, for example, Jelly Bean um, is API 16 to 18 was the Jelly Bean uh, history. 14 and 15 was Ice Cream Sandwich. 11 to 13 was Honeycomb, and then you go back to really quite old versions of of Android. You can download them if you want to. I'm going to suggest we just stick with KitKat uh, for this particular module. The final thing that we want to get is part of the extras. And it's down at the very bottom, the Intel uh, Emulator Accelerator HXM installer. This is the reason why I suggest that we get the Intel uh, system images. The emulator is a bit sluggish, a bit slow. It, it has been improving over the, the iterations, but this is um, a little accelerator that will let you use your GPU and your, your laptop or desktop to, to power uh, the emulator and speeds it up quite noticeably. So these are the packages we want. We'll go ahead and we'll install the packages. Again, there's uh, terms and conditions, but you can read those at your leisure. Set them all and we will install it. It can take a reasonable amount of time to, to download and install all the different bits depending upon your connection and depending upon uh, the amount of stuff that you have chosen uh, to to download. I haven't picked that much by way of this one here, but it's up to you how much you, you do um, decide to, to install. So we'll let this uh, carry on. It shouldn't take too much longer. There's one little thing we need to do after this is downloaded, and, and this is where you know you see installed, not installed. When we get to the end here, it's going to suggest that the Intel Emulator Accelerator has been installed. It's lying. It hasn't. What it does is that it will download the installer, but doesn't actually bother installing it, which is a bit of a shame, but well, there you go. So we need to remember once we have this notionally installed, we need to then go and actually do the proper install. And that's going to be important by way of getting the accelerator in. So we can quit out our SDK manager. If we were to go into our SDK, into extras, into Intel, we'll have our hardware accelerated execution manager. And inside that, you've got the Intel XGXM. So if that's what you want to run. That will install the accelerator. I've already got it installed on this machine, so I don't need to, to do it again. But it's a very straightforward um, installation. So at this point, we're more or less um, ready. We can kick off Eclipse into our Eclipse directory and run Eclipse. And Juno is the particular uh, version of Eclipse that we are running. Now, when you start up Eclipse, for the first time, or, or possibly for subsequent unless you click on using uh, Workspace as your default, is asking you, well, where do you want your project files to be stored? So Eclipse uses a workspace, and uh, this is where if you're loading projects or saving projects, it'll save it to the, the workspace. And you can have as many different workspaces as you want, but it can only access one at a point in time. So I'm going to uh, create a workspace. Um, where will we put it? put it in the desktop Android. We'll just put it in the same folder that we have here. Make new folder. Um, we'll call it our workspace. And that will do. And we'll say OK. And th that will then enable this to, to fire up. And we have um, Eclipse up and running. If you want to make sure that it's the Android version, if you go to Window, you'll see that we can actually run our Android SDK Manager from this 
We also have our virtual device manager, which we'll be looking at in the, the next uh, video. Um, this is the one that we can use to create a, an emulator, a virtual device, and deploy our programs to this. And Android Lint is extremely useful. It's, um, it, it looks at the, the code that we write and suggests things that can improve it. So it's not really concerned with um, you know, compilation syntactic errors. It's more semantic. It's asking you, did you really mean to do this? Or have you forgotten about that? Or this may not be particularly useful. And normally it's spot on the money in terms of the, the suggestions that it, uh, that it provides. So a very useful way of, of helping to, to improve your, your role program. Now, we're nearly there. We've got Eclipse. We've got um, the Android SDK uh, installed along with the tools. The final thing we need to install is Subversion. And we're going to use this to enable use a, a team, a development team, to, to share your project and, and for me to get access to it um, as well. The easiest way to install Subclips is through the marketplace. Eclipse is a marketplace where you can install lots of different things. Unfortunately, the version of Juno that you download with the Android uh, developer tools it doesn't come along with the marketplace. So we're going to install the marketplace first of all, and then through the marketplace, we'll install um, subclips. So to put on the marketplace, we need to install new software. Uh, this will fire up. Um, we're interested in installing plugins for Juno. Um, we select that. Now it has to go and populate this list, so it can take uh, a little bit of time in doing that. Um, we can just, just search for market. Oop. Now, annoyingly, whenever you're typing in here, whenever it thinks you've finished typing, it'll go and search. And it can take a little bit of time. So anyway, market P, uh, marketplace client, that will do. So we can click on this and we will install this. Uh, marketplace client, yes. Uh, again, we're accepting the license for using it. And off it goes. You run the background if you want, but we're going to have to restart um, Eclipse when this is done, so there's not much point running in the um, the background. Once we've got this in, when we next go to our, our Help menu, let's start Eclipse. When we next go to the Help menu, it's going to um, show us the uh, Marketplace client. So uh, Workspace, actually, we'll just use this as the default, so it's not going to prompt us in this again. And we'll let Juno start up. So now we will have Eclipse Marketplace. So we run that and resize this window a little bit. It is worthwhile having an explore of all of the different things that they have on this because there are hundreds of very useful plugins for Eclipse that can help in, in whole reams of different things. But sub uh, clips is what we're interested in. Um, we search for it. There'll be a few different things that come up from this. We're just interested in basic sub clips. So we install that. And the nice thing about the marketplace client is that if a, a plugin has a, a you know, as a collection of dependencies, a subclips is in a simple way, it'll handle all of the different bits that need to be um, installed. So we'll let it go ahead and in, install um, subclips. Once we have subclips, um, there'll be a new perspective that appears. Um, this I'll, I'll show you once we we do get this installed, and the perspectives will enable us to perspective rather will enable us to to explore different SVN repositories, uh, and for each of the teams, you'll have your own repository uh, accessible and available uh, to you. So, can take a little bit of time just to get it uh, downloaded. From what I recall, this is not. A perfect installation because you will get prompt probably at a point saying that uh, there is some um, unsigned software that it wants you to install. So they really should have signed all of their their different pieces, but there's a bit they never bothered their back end doing. Shame on them. But it's a safe enough thing to uh, to install. So unsigned content, yes, you normally should be very wary at this point, but we're we're happy that we can trust subclips. Need to restart Eclipse? Fair enough. And Eclipse will then fire up again. And there we go. Um, please allow to receive anonymous usage. No, thank you. Now, 
the way of checking it, if you go to open perspective, we've got different perspectives in here for, for example, um, C, C++ development for debugging our program, if we're uh, looking at how our emulator is running. But a new one that appeared has been SVN repository exploring. And that's how we know that Subclips has successfully um, installed. And that's it. That's all the bits that we need to install. We're set up. We're ready to go. Uh, next video, we'll have a look at how we can create an emulator and use this as a way of deploying our programs to. And we'll also look at the yeah, actual using an actual uh, Android device. And um, the uh, videos beyond this, we'll have a look at how we actually can put together uh, a few simple Android programs. Hopefully, a few.